Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, August 15. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has confirmed that he will be realigning his cabinet. The confirmation came Wednesday as he responded to questions during his quarterly press briefing. There will be some changes, obviously, uh, and I'm, I've already started consultations on that just to make sure that in making those changes, that in, in correcting one problem, I don't create another problem. Mr. Holness has also confirmed that a new science and technology minister will be announced once a review of the ministry's boards and governance structures is finalized. As for the energy ministry... The energy portfolio has good um, administration from the civil service and public service uh, point of view. Uh, and as soon as the commission delivers its report and the divestment agenda is clear, then I don't need to have that under my um, supervision anymore. In other news, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the state will be setting up a commission on how to deal with what he termed an epidemic of violence. He is enlisting the help of the media in how it promotes, projects, produces, and publicizes content which supports violence. It is not a discussion for politicians solely to have. It is a national discussion. And when I announce this commission, I'm certain that we will be inviting members of the Press Association and the Media Association to participate to help us to come to a Jamaican solution to this issue of violence. Prime Minister Holness was addressing Monday's opening ceremony for the 49th Annual General Assembly of the Caribbean Broadcasting Union. He used the occasion to pledge government's continued support for press freedom on the island, including passing legislation such as the Defamation Act, as well as access to information and whistleblower laws. He also urged the press to use its influence to counter the ill effects of fake news and alternative facts being promulgated through social media. I depend, literally, on our press to ensure that whatever false information is spread in social media, that they, at some point in time, will use their editorial abilities, their research abilities, to correct false narrative that is spread in social media. In the meantime, Information Minister Senator Royal Reid has welcomed Jamaica's sixth place ranking on the 2018 World Press Freedom Index. The island moved up two places on the list of 180 countries since last year. While affirming government's unwavering commitment to retaining free speech, Minister Reid called on media practitioners to carry out their duties conscientiously. It is of course important that these rights and freedoms are exercised responsibly and that attention is paid to maintaining high standards with respect to accuracy and fair play to preserve the credibility upon which the profession depends. 51 liaison officers will soon be deployed in all 14 parishes to help keep youth clubs alive. We're going to be doing three U Club assistance per constituency over the stage of the next year or so. And again, those are to ensure that they go into the communities, work with the clubs, get them sustainable so that they can take charge of these safe spaces. The Minister of State was speaking at the National Youth Symposium held under the theme, Safe Spaces for Youth. He said the youth club assistants were being trained and would receive certification and gainful employment at the end of the year of service. We have given them the training in terms of how do you form a club, how do you work on a business plan, what are some of the things that the club must have to ensure it is registered, and more importantly, how can you transform that club into a social enterprise. The project stems from the Charge Up initiative, which was launched in November last year during Youth Month to support the work of youth-based organizations in the country. 18 persons with disabilities are now benefiting from developmental workshops aimed at providing skills training and employment opportunities. The group was selected from a cohort of 40 who participated in the Summer Apprentice Program. It's being facilitated by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security under its Social and Economic Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities project. Managing Director at the Abilities Foundation, Susan Hamilton, says since the start of the year, $13 million has been spent to provide participants with skills and work opportunities. It has been one of the best projects in terms of impact in the workplace. We played some of our students were at nurseries, lawyers' offices, food establishments, um, general office attendants. I must 
say we have had a good response this year from employers that were willing to engage our students. The four-year $2.9 million U.S. dollar program is funded by the Japan Policy Human Resources Development Grant and the World Bank. And finally, upgrades on the Sangster International Airport's ramp and taxiway is 80% complete. The airport says the $26 million U.S. dollar resurfacing works being carried out by Mandeville-based company S&G Roads is on track. Asphalt works are scheduled for completion by mid-September with concrete works to end in November. All construction works are being performed at night so that they don't interfere with normal airport operations. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.